Hello and welcome to News Click. We're going to discuss again the much discussed item already in News Click, the MCAS system, the Boeing 737 MAX's problem, and the new issue that has been raised that all of this is the result of Indian software people who charge very low and have apparently caused this caused these two Boeings to crash. Raghu, when the Boeings crashed, first in the Lion Air case and then in the Ethiopian Airlines case, there was also this kind of arguments that really the brown and black pilots were not very good. And that's why it crashed, but it never crashes elsewhere. And then it, was, it transpired that even when all the f suggestions, whatever Boeing had issued as what it has to be done, after the MCAS system became public, none of that actually did work in the Ethiopian Airlines and neither of the flight simulator where it was tested. Right. So how seriously do you take this $9 Indian uh, engineers issue? Uh, I don't take it seriously at all. I think it's a typical red herring. And uh, last ditch Boeing effort to avoid uh, exactly, shall we say, claims? exactly one of many. I'm sure there'll be a more of these to come next time. It'll be some other scapegoat that they are uh, looking for. In this particular case, though, Boeing's own earlier uh, statements are obviously uh, in contradiction. Boeing is on record as saying that the software designed. Uh, in response to the MCAS uh, system did precisely what it was required to do, which was to respond to the high angle of attack by lowering the nose. This is what the software was told to do and that's what the software did. In fact, <laughs> so, the two problems with that were the following. One is the, there is a single sensor yeah. which was connected to the MCAS that's system right. and the two two sensors, That's checking right. the two sensors are That's in agreement, right. all this was, wasn't was there. there and in the if system. one of them malfunctioned, then you then, are not sure what happened. And in fact, the one of the ones which was sending the signal did malfunction. Exactly. And whatever may have been the reason. Exactly. So it had a wrong, shall we say, input. understanding or yeah. an input of the angle of attack. Correct. And therefore it was trying to dip the nose. That's right. And that is what finally the pilots couldn't overcome. That's right. The second argument which was given was that uh, the pilots could have stopped all of this if they had followed the what is called the runaway situation in which the stabilizer was That's in right. by switching it off switching and it. Doing, doing the manual operation yeah. which is really to pull up, to the, pull up the aircraft manually. Absolutely. And it was then shown that under the condition, the speed at which it was then op uh, flying, that this was hydrodynamically not possible right. for them to fight the forces of the tail. Impossible. And therefore, the pilots couldn't really pull it up. Absolutely. These are the two things. Absolutely. Now, this has nothing really to do with the software. Nothing at all. You see, that's precisely the point. They had nothing to do with the software. And what the software was designed to do was to respond to a high angle of attack. And it's thought there was a high angle of attack because of the sensor. Because of the also. sensor. So the problem is with the sensor, not, not with the software. Or the fact that you had a single sensor <laughs> That's and right. you did not do That's two right. out of three or That's right. you know put the whole thing That's on right. manual and right. so on. But there is another issue which again has uh, something which we need to focus on, which is again now public. It's been discussed for the last two to three months, which is again being avoided at the moment, that when the FAA initial proposal was given by Boeing, the the amount of intervention and the speed at which it would be intervening, the MCAS system, those limits were very different what finally was actually done in the field. Okay. The, in fact, the number of times it would intervene, the speed at which it would intervene, and the total amount to dip the nose, all of this changed, Correct. which meant that the actually the nose dipping was faster and more than what was originally disclosed to the FAA, and it was never actually placed before the FAA that these changes have taken place. That's right. And if it had, uh, the FAA, because the angle of dip, uh, the change in that, as well as the number of times that would uh, intervene. Uh, intervene, if Boeing had disclosed these to FAA, it would have further raised the risk level 
at which the number of inspections the FAA would have had to do, the extent of corrective measures that the FAA would be required to call upon would have increased. That would have taken more time for certification, which is obviously what Boeing wanted to avoid. It wanted a quick certification by the FAA and which is what they got at the end leading to these uh, problems. So I'm not going to go into, of course, the larger issue whether we should have had a Again, a 40-year, essentially 40-year design being loaded with all of this trying to compete, That's essentially right. with a much newer design which was the Airbus 320. Yeah. But coming back to the issue of software, the new uh, tests that FAA has conducted has thrown out something which people have been arguing regarding the 737, that the problems of the MAX, 737 MAX version, under certain conditions are similar to what the 737 would experience and therefore some of the unexplained crashes of the 737 which have been blamed on the pilots might be actually a problem older of the problems. Old, older problem of instability yeah. trying to correct manually under certain conditions right. the tail uh, stabilizers. That's right. That's right. Now one of the issues that has again come here it seems regarding the testing that the FAA is doing and they had said they are going to also test some of these issues on the older design. Now that seems to show that the controllers, the flight controller, that seems to get overloaded and this was not something which is to do with MCAS but in trying to take the MCAS inputs into account or doing some of the what are called the MCAS improvements, fixes, bug fixes that have been attempted, it seems to have uncovered a different problem which is the flight control system actually overloading and therefore not responding under when you are really flying, flying under automatic uh, controls. True. And this is something which now is sought to be blamed on the Indian engineers. Right. Now how do you seriously do you take there, this again? There is absolutely no connection because this is a like you said, this is a 30 to 35 year old problem with the 737 uh, fuselage. And in fact, the 737 with its old fuselage and older engines has had one of the best safety records uh, in the industry. It is today being tested against the background of what we know today, going back uh, tracing it back to 30 years it has nothing to do with the software which is uh, designed for the MCAS system which has come in because of the leap uh, engine and its peculiar placement on the Boeing aircraft. So this throwback and then reinventing a problem of Indian engineers, I mean it's a very clear red herring. Uh, you know the other thing is that the controllers, the flight control controllers are actually 80 to 86 processors and they are of again late uh, 80s vintage. Late 80s vintage, vintage. exactly. And the uh, reason they are there of course is that you know it's something that works. You don't want to change it yeah. and the 80 to 86 processors of the 86 processors essentially uh, work very well. They have been in various control systems but 30 years down the line. That's right. That exactly. seems really something which should have been phased out long back, Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. and you have had at least a, a, at least five generation of That's processor right. families That's right. in between. That's right. And I, as you know, have a control system background and we worked on these processors. They were really something which were state of the art in the late That's 80s. Right. That's right. And it's very, very surprising for me Absolutely. when I want, I see these issues. And they are actually written basically in machine code, assembly language, yes. because you want them to respond fast. That's right. So effectively what you have done is you are loading MCAS signals already on a processor and it's the external signals that come in of course that increase also the load. So it seems to be adding an MCAS itself causes certain problems Precisely. with the basic control, Precisely. flight control systems. Precisely. And again, this is not something yeah. That if somebody sitting in HCL would have done. Not at all. It also this is because not this the is super. Tool. This is superimposing the MCAS based system on a pre-existing system dating back to 25 years to 30 years. So it's clearly not a a problem caused by the specific uh, software. 
in which case something would have turned up over all these years uh, and not suddenly now. Uh. So it's also interesting that when you talk about how do you test software fixes, there are two things you always do. Once you of course test it for various conditions, which is what the FAA at the moment is doing, which has uncovered this new problem. And they did say that they're going to check also the uh, 737 sure. problems, which might be older vintage, sure. but also be has become worse because of the, uh, shall we say exactly what you said, the change yeah. in fuselage, the That's way right. the engines have been mounted, and the addition of the MCAS system. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you do in software, as again, which quite would be known to people who deal with it, is that you have to test it for all conditions, FAA is doing sure. it. Other thing you have to do is also stress it. Yeah. That means overload the system, all the signals, all the things that can Subject happen. Subject it to all the worst scenario. What uh, is called a stress test. That's right. And under the stress test, you still we have to have some margins. Yeah. And you can defi define what the margin is, but the stress test of those margins have also to be tested. Sure. And this is always done by the end supplier. Correct. That if this is not something which would be, shall we say, handed out to HCL or any outsourced vendor yeah. in the world. Yeah. And so this to and say, even, and frankly, even if it is, as the main contractor who is doing the job, if you subcontract this job to somebody, it's your business to test it before you. Uh, particularly uh, if it is thirty-year-old controllers, that's right, and with that's hand coded, right. essentially and, the right. hand coded assembly and, codes. And if you are using it in a situation where there is a probability of a runaway uh, elevator uh, problem which is really, in a sense, a crisis situation. Uh, the fact that you ran it without testing it fully, if that's what has uh, happened, is amazing. That, that's what it seemed to show, you know. And I would say that when we initially discussed this issue, remember at the time there was a talk about how the Ethiopian pilot, the co-pilot had very that's low it. experience, but the other pilot was a very experienced one. He has, I think, about 5,000 hours yeah. of experience. Both the line air pilots were pretty experienced. Pretty experienced but yeah. we saw in the blogs, in the, shall we say, the social media, a huge amount of comments about how the brown and black pilots. Yeah, sure. And you see the reputation again, not serious technical evaluate discussions, but in the blogs and other places, $9 per hour that's engineer right, right. has been flagged right. as the cause. And considering that today, whether it is Google, whether it's Microsoft, you can see the whole leadership of a lot of these companies, tech companies are Indians. In fact, at one point, it was said in the Silicon Valley that if you didn't have an Indian on your startup, then the, the funders actually would not fund you. Yeah. Okay, so therefore, to talk about the outsourcing, which has been the model, which has been what most companies have done, including R&D outsourcing, yeah to India and China, it, it actually shows that this is a, a playing up to the racist gallery Absolutely. and Boeing trying to create red herrings, as right. you said. Two small points I wanted to add precisely on this. One is, this is not just Boeing. This is also the FAA, which is trying its best to cover its backside uh, on this issue. The FAA knows full well that it has goofed uh, it has either been quiet or it has actively colluded with Boeing to allow an uh, improperly tested uh, safety equipment, etc., and controllers and so on into the 737 MAX. Now it is A, trying to bend over backwards to keep testing and retesting stuff. Just last week, Boeing brought another computer uh, based software to test on the simulators. The minute the FAA guy sat inside the simulator, it ma the computer was giving wrong signals. The FAA guy in disgust walked out and said, don't do this to us. Don't keep bringing stuff which you want us to test, hoping that we'll pass it. You test it, run it through all the tests and call us when you think it's ready. So I think Boeing and FAA are both chasing each other's tail in defending their own uh, incompetence. previous incompetence, incompetence and bad uh, performance, actions of bad faith, and both of them are trying to scapegoat somebody or the other. 
The second point I wanted to make was, in particular, this attack on Indians and the H-1B visas and the $9 uh, stuff is pandering to Donald Trump uh, and is dragging Donald Trump into this controversy, thinking he will find something to latch on to. He'll have something to tweet about at 3 a.m. Uh, the next morning and hoping that that will also then snowball into a pattern of blame which they can then use to shift to somebody else. It's also interesting, the 787 uh, issue. Uh, the Boeing, uh, the Boeing has proposed that a lot of the tests be done through computer simulation. That's right. Now, of course, how do you do computer simulation of computer controls right. is a question we still need to ask. But nevertheless, that instead of increasing testing, Boeing at this point of time should have come out with a suggestion that testing being, testing being reduced speaks volumes about Boeing. Absolutely. At this rate um, it is going, this MAX 737 issue is not going away. It's not going away. They are still continuing. Boeing still continues to add provisos by which they can reduce costs for their airline uh, customers. All the simulations they are running now are supposed to finally culminate in a system which you can train pilots on using an iPad. Well, that's what uh, the Max 737 transition to. Transition to, but they are still more. sticking to that uh, methodology, which uh, very experienced pilots, including the famous Sullenberger, the miracle on the Hudson pilot has recently said, there is no way in which a successful uh, testing of this or training can be done by using an iPad. You have to be able to do it on a simulator if you really want your pilots to learn. And particularly if you have to physically move that's, that's, the that's just out of controls complete. back and forth. Ridiculous. And uh, it's interesting. These are not hydraulically controlled. Exactly. Impossible. They're actually right. wear and pulleys. Absolutely. So fly by wear gets a different meaning when <laughs> exactly. you talk about this. Exactly. So this is what happens when you do a yeah. 30, 35, yeah. 40 year old technology right. and then try to bring it up to date today. Right. Thank you very much, Raghu, for being with us, sharing with us what are the latest on the 737 Max long running saga, which seems to be going longer. Absolutely. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Do keep watching News Click and do visit our website.